G'day and welcome to the Peter Montgomery Show. It's great to have you here. Now, I've got an awesome guest lined up for you today, but before we kick off, I just want to introduce you to our sponsor, YMAG. YMAG is a magazine all about your why, why you do what you do in business. Uh, one of the many great things about YMAG is you can submit your why story to be featured in the magazine. Uh, you can request to be a feature writer about your business and about your why. Uh, and also, this is something I've taken advantage of, is you can secure prime advertising space in the magazine. Magazine, and it's directed towards a niche audience, which is just incredible. I love it. So after the show, click on the link and go subscribe to YMAG. All right, let's go meet our guest today. G'day, Mia. Uh, welcome to the show. It's great to have you on. I've been looking forward to this for a long time. Awesome. Yeah, I'm happy to be here. So can you quickly tell us that what you're doing now, say the type of people that you're working with, and then I want to dig back because I've been following you for a number of years now. So I want to dig back and find out and get you to share your story and your journey. But we'll start off with kind of who you're working with now. Yeah, now I would say I really focus on working with solopreneurs and anyone that wants to get their message out to the world. So it's mostly entrepreneurs that have some kind of value, some kind of passion they want to get out to the marketplace. So that's really who I focus in on helping them to really have a, a following, get the engagement and profit online doing what they already love to do. Okay, now I, I, I'm a big reader of, uh, particularly of Seth Godin's material, and I follow a lot of his stuff. Now he he mentioned something: if you're going to do your passion, sometimes trying to monetize your passion can actually defeat the purpose and wreck what you've created. So you've created something cool, you're passionate about it, but then you try and make money, and it's not so good. So he says, you know, kind of when you go to monetize your passion, make it something that kind of lends itself to that already. So when you do that, it kind of enhances what you do. So how, how are you kind of working with people, you know, the different passions people have and working out how they actually can make money from it? Yeah. And I completely agree with that. I love, um, I love Seth Godin, by the way, I'm just trying to grab my phone so it doesn't keep beeping. Um, I love what he says, but I, and the way that I view it now with the social era too there's a way to get into profit rather than feeling like you're turning something great into a salesy thing. All you do is you need to know how to package your value in a way that these people who already love what you have are interested in paying money to have more of what they already love, like another level of it. Mm. So it's more a matter of packaging up what you have to give to the marketplace. And I don't view it as selling. I view it as serving them. Because if you don't package up your value in a way that other people can consume it, then their life doesn't really get to be changed. Because if all you do is put out free stuff, free stuff, free stuff, you're not able to really expand and give all of yourself because financially you're not really supported in what you're doing. So if you're able to get into profit at the same time you're serving your clients by giving them more of what they need, that's how I view it. So I, I understand when people say that, but I just see it very differently. Because if you do it right, people feel like it's just an extension, it's another level, and if they have the money, they're going to want to buy it and move on to more of what they already love of you. Um, and I see a lot of people skipping over that, and I think it's that fear of, oh my gosh, I don't want to ruin what I have, and you just won't when you do it right. Okay, so what, what do you think the, the key is then to making that transition, or yeah, you, I guess you should have the plan from the start of kind of how you, you're going to do it or that you are going to do it. How do you make that transition work in a way that's cool that they go good on you you know well done as opposed to oh no now they're gonna make me pay what's the key to that little spot there that's a great question and the bottom line is everything I teach entrepreneurs is you have to first understand where the money is made online it's not made on Facebook or Twitter or any of these places right you want to grow your following and you want to get engagement so you have to be offering value 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 all over the place right I mean you want people to just love what you're doing and get value from it but from there you have to understand how to grow a list and this is where most people fall short but when people give you their name and email they enter into a new world. Now you can start a real dialogue with them because every piece of content that you email out, you have, you have the ability to send it straight to their inbox. You go post on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, not everybody's going to see what you do, nor can you be direct marketing in those places. You're going to scare everyone off. Those places are for value only. You can invite people onto your list. Those who say, yes, I want to come on to your list. I, I think you're, not, you're awesome. I want to get more of your free value. They opt in. Now you can actually start to have the conversation of where there's going to be an exchange of money for value. Nowhere else should you be having that conversation. You don't put a sales page on Facebook, right? Mm -hmm. You have a conversation by growing your list. 
So everyone has always said, you know, the bigger your list is, the more money you're going to make online. And it's very true, but you have to understand how to communicate with that list. When they first come onto your list, your first one to two weeks should be pure value, just building a relationship and trust. Then you can have some kind of promotion. Now, promotion on that list is where you should be offering something that will help your target market, something that will totally change their life, whether it be your own product or something you're an affiliate for, something that you feel will take them to the next level. And when you do it that way and you do it with these people who have already opted into your list, nobody feels offended by that. So you do some kind of promotion for a short period of time. It might just be one or two days. It might be up to a week. Um, you don't hammer it out. You just, you know, you just encourage people to take action. And here's why I recommend it. Then you go back into another one to two weeks of peer value. So people see the value staying on your list because you're not just hitting them with offers. You're going value and then you're saying, here, I recommend something. Value, I recommend something. So they know they want to stay on your list because you keep offering these cycles of value. Whether they buy or not, they're going to stay on your list. But those who want more can buy. So that's the bottom line. Nobody's going to feel offended when you do it that way. Now, the people who don't like what you just, all of a sudden you're going you're gonna to encourage them to buy something, they can unsubscribe from your list and nobody's upset. Nobody got hurt. It didn't damage your reputation. It's fine. I like that too. Yeah, th th they can disappear and that's cool. And it's not like a, a mean thing. It's just they're not the ones that are going to buy from you. And as long as you do it that way, you're not going to get a whole bunch of unsubscribes and I'm unhappy with you and all this kind of stuff. Yeah. You know, if we even think of Seth Godin, for example, he puts all this value out there, right? He's like pure value, value, value. But there's plenty of us marketers that would love like some insider stuff from him, right? So if he just said, look, guys, I'm putting all this value out there, but I just packaged something up um, for you know, $10 a month or for $197, whatever, I'm going to give you some insider stuff. I'm going to spend more time with you and deliver some stuff. Tons of us would purchase it, you know, no yeah. idea. But totally. You, like, you, you expect it. You want to be sold yeah. to from them. Oh, you got something. Cool. Yes. Uh, yeah. Yes. I, I'm tired exactly. of just the free stuff. Give me something that I can really sink into. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Now, and another thing to remember here is going back, you mentioned something like maybe you should know this right off the bat. And I would say, yes, let, when you're thinking about coming online and bringing your value, let's stop and think about who is your ideal target market. Now, your ideal target market should be people that, you know, are likely to end up buying something from you. Otherwise, you, if you're interested in getting into profit, right? If your target market are going to be people that just want free stuff, for example, if that was your ideal target market, then, yeah, maybe it's not a good idea to package something because they're, they're already proven to be the kind of people that want free stuff. So when you sit back and really think about your target market, first of all, if you're targeting the right people, then they're, they're the kind of people that are going to want to invest in themselves. In the area. Yes, yes, yes. Now, because I kind of tend to, uh, this is an entrepreneur's show. It's about entrepreneurialism. It's about marketing. It's about business and making sales. Surprise, surprise, I'm eventually going to sell something to people. You know, yeah, like it's it's... It should be kind of no surprise, I guess, to them when you do start marketing. Would that be a fair statement? Yeah, but I still don't even see it as marketing. First of all, I call, like, if you're connecting, that's the new marketing, right? If you're connecting with your audience, you're doing a good job marketing. And then when it comes to sales, if it's just a way of serving your audience, you know? Yeah. Um, I heard this great example uh, on stage a few months ago. I think it was Mark Hoverson said this, that, okay, let's say you were a fitness trainer, right? And this is talking even more about high ticket level stuff, right? Mm. Let's say you're a fitness trainer and you're offering people free tips and then you also have a product that's a couple hundred dollars where they can get your six days to looking hot and sexy, whatever, right? And then let's imagine you had like a high ticket where it was, I don't know, $10,000 and you will fly out to their house and you'll spend a week with them. This might be more than ten thousand dollars. Yeah, that, right? I was thinking that sounds like two days with one of those guys. <laughs> right. Let's let's say twenty thousand dollars. I'll come out to your house. I'm going to spend a week with you. I'm going to go grocery shopping with you. I'm going to go through your fridge with you. Um, I'm going to I'm going to go work out with you. I'm going to teach you a new routine for an entire week. You're going to get a new life, right? And then you're going to just keep up with that routine. Now, let's say you were charging twenty thousand for that. Someone might be like, Oh my gosh. That's horrible. But let's stop and think about it. Nobody else is offering that. And what if that's the one thing that would change, you know, that woman's life? And, and she has $20,000. It's not a big deal. But no one else is willing to come spend that time with her. So the way that I see, sorry, I knew this was going to happen. My phone's ringing and I don't know where it is. <laughs> that's all right. Can you hear it? Man, I've had furniture deliveries in my interviews. Oh, there it is. <laughs> that's all right. Uh, so it's, 
you know, it's kind of like thinking more about serving your clients as the bottom line. Mm. How can I better serve them? You know, and if you're going to take the time to really help them, it's, it doesn't make sense to give it away for free. And that's actually not helping your customers. Here's the other interesting thing about charging. I have found the more I charge, the more, the better results people get. Because they, it's like they invested in themselves. The people who pay, you know, pay me eight to 10000 when we're doing a lot of the done-for-you stuff and, and all the different things that we do for people, those people show up on every single call. They never miss anything. They get everything done and they make money. Mm. You see what I mean? So it's like I've noticed that charging people is actually helping them because if you give everything for free, guess what people do? They just like, oh, store it in a folder and get back to it three years I'll from look now. At it. Yeah, they don't <laughs> value it the same way. So I think giving yeah. stuff away for free all the time is – can end up hurting others and you compared to you adding in different levels. Mm, I, I like what you said too about it's not marketing anymore, it's connecting. The connection is, well, it's not even marketing because it shouldn't even come into it kind of in a way now. It, that's different. That sounds like uh, advertising now versus the connecting, just, hey, look, I've got this, you've got that, let's, let's do a deal. Cool, sounds fun. All right, now let's dig back now. How did you learn all of this stuff? Uh, where did you start? I want to get your story on tape. And share it with people because I've been there for a lot of it too, just on the sidelines. Like we haven't had tons of interaction. We've had little bits here and there, but I've been I've been there watching it unfold and seen tra- the transition from where you were to where you are now is incredible. And you've got such a a tight following. And so yeah, how did you start out? Where did you start this stuff? Yeah, I started out really um, before I came online. I've, I've had a strong desire to always be an entrepreneur, first of all. So I was doing, uh, I had my own speech therapy business. So I was doing well financially and loved what I was doing, but I was introduced to network marketing. And then I grew network marketing the way I was trained to do it because I'd never heard of anything like it before. So I went and talked to all my friends and family, signed up over 100 people. I was making, you know, a couple thousand a month, something like that, which was nice. Paid the mortgage and the car payment and stuff like that. Um, and I thought this is neat, but then I just started wondering, I wonder if I could do this on the internet, you know, and this was, I don't know how many years ago, maybe three, four years ago. Mm. I wonder if I could do this on the internet because no one was really talking about that at the time. And I started doing a lot of research, but during that time, it was very difficult to know who the heck to trust and follow because everyone was kind of saying, you know, I'm the pro, I'm the guru. And then I would find out later, like that person was not making any money and stuff. And I didn't know who was legit. And, um, I actually found out about a community called um, MLM Goldmine. I don't know if you remember that. It was put, it was created by DK and um, Jimmy Davis. Yeah, yep. Yeah, it, and my I story remember, marketing. Yeah, and it was something like two to five thousand dollars or something to get involved. And I just knew I wanted to be in there. I wanted to connect with the right people, and that was probably the best decision I had ever made. Was being part of that community. A lot of the the top earning internet marketers in this space, whatever, came out of that community actually, and. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's very powerful to be connected with the right people. So I got into that, and uh, that got me connected to the right people. Started kind of learning what it is that's actually working online, attraction marketing, all that kind of stuff. From there, I went into um, you know buying magnetic sponsoring by Mike Dillard, yep. which was the big book then, um, the big shift. And I copy uh, over there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's still a great book. Um, and then I got into my lead system pro and met all those guys. I attended every event I could possibly ever hear of. Yeah. So I connected with everyone. I was doing tons of video interviews. I just had this old camera that was not even a video camera. It wasn't even HD. And for the first few years, I did all these videos just with this little camera that didn't even have high definition. And I would interview people at every event. And I just had this passion to, to be one of them, to be able to reach that kind of success. I loved the idea of it. But I started with video from day one. I was terrified of video, but I didn't care. I just knew I wanted to express myself and connect with people through video. And that was probably the number one best thing I ever could have done from day one was doing video. So what happened was um, I was able to do network marketing online, but my company was very strict. So I started getting all these warnings. In, I don't know. If you know <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, you know, we, we're going to shut your account down if you make another video. So I got kind of nervous. It made me feel like I had a job, like I had an yes. employer that fire me, and I didn't like the feeling at all. I was like, that's not why I ever chose to do network marketing. So I moved away from that company, and I got into a new company. 
And within about 60 days, I became one of their top recruiters. I was their number one female in the company. I was put on the pamphlet and on all the conference calls. I was getting a lot of attention on me. But the truth was I was hardly making any money in network marketing yet because I was recruiting. But as we know, network marketing, the money comes from duplication. Yeah. So I was recruiting no problem using video and, and just the connection. I had people at a high level of trust with me and they just signed up like crazy, you know. So that was really fun. Um, but very soon I felt inauthentic. I just felt like something's missing. This isn't really for me. And I don't know how else to say it except that I just knew something wasn't right. And when I know that, I just choose not to do it. So I actually sold my position. And I had people, a lot of people's opinions about that, kind of like, why are you quitting and all this stuff. It was like, I'm not quitting. I just know that there's something else calling me. And what really, what really resonated with me was empowering entrepreneurs to get results online and not just network marketers. I just love the internet and I love the platform yeah. and I want all entrepreneurs, whatever it is they were doing, whether it be network marketing or whether it be something else to be able to get results with it. And I had a lot of people asking me how I was doing video and a lot of people asking me how I was getting results to recruit into my business. But I knew everything I was doing could convert to any entrepreneurial endeavor. It was about trust. And that's when I kind of stepped back and I just said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to teach people how to do what I did. And I made my first online product and I had no idea what I was doing. And I didn't know if it would sell. I had no idea if people would buy my training, you know. Yeah. First product, I, I made something like thirteen to $15,000 in my first little product that I made. It was a little video product. Yeah, I was going to ask, what is the product? called Video Recruiting Formula, and it was teaching network marketers actually how to use video to recruit. And um, so I did well with this little product, and uh, and then I loved it. It was like, oh my gosh, I'm able to help people from all over the place um, get results. And and I, I loved the idea of that. And ever since then, I've gone down that platform of I just want to teach entrepreneurs how to use this awesome tool that we have, and most people are so afraid of it. And that's the path I've been on. And I went on to create other products. I had, um, I actually went on to start doing more live stuff out here in San Diego. So I was doing masterminds and even having um, like one day consultations kind of with people that could fly out and just meet with me. So those were more high ticket kind of things. So I was charging high ticket prices, um, anywhere from three to $10,000. And I realized there was such a need for people to learn high ticket. There are people with so much value. I don't care what field you're in. There's different levels of your value. And this isn't about, let me go make a bunch of money off one person. This is more about what's the highest level of value I could deliver by giving my one-on-one -on -one time in these different things and charge more money for it and mm. cater, cater to that person who has the money, cater to the person who's wanting more. And um, I know for me, I, I invested over $20,000 in an entrepreneurial program way early on. When I was like 26 years old, it was one of the best things I did. I've spent up to $10,000 for one day to, met, to be mentored by somebody. Um, and I don't regret any of that. I was grateful they were willing to do that. So I love the idea of high ticket. I started to do it. And then anything I do that works, what I do is I turn around and I teach other people how to do what I just did. Anything I teach, I only teach what I've done. So then I made a program to teach other entrepreneurs how to do high ticket. And that was called Internet Prosperity Formula. So that was pretty much just all focused on high ticket. And from there, I came into creating something called the 90-Day Online Marketing Challenge, which I have now. Now that is really taking people from the beginning of your mindset, right? So knowing that you have the right mindset, because if your mindset isn't right, I don't care what I teach you, you're not going to make money or get results. So it's everything from mindset, having your heart in the right place, following your passion and understanding who your target market is, all the way to attracting your following, growing the list, having the conversation about money, and turning it into profit, then automating it so that you're making money ongoingly. So it's a complete system. And that's my primary focus right now. And what, I've, what I'm now adding to that program is what I feel is absolutely critical, which is the accountability and the one-on-one -on -one coaching that people really need. Because here's what I'm seeing with people. I don't care what you teach them. I don't care how good your program is. If it's just a series of videos that they go through at their own pace, as human beings, we don't stick with things when we don't have accountability. Most people don't, unless you just have this like really awesome level of drive or whatever it is. So um, I'm adding that in now a complete coaching structure. It's really a coaching program. And then the 90 day challenge is the series of videos that I'm having them go through. But the bottom line is I feel like people need that accountability and they need to have someone hold them to what they said, right? In a mm -hmm. loving way. 
and, you know, have to show up every week and, and acknowledge their patterns of sometimes saying, I said I would do this and guess what? I didn't do it again. You know, so then you really start to get honest about why you're not making money, why you're not growing a following, you know, and you get, you get to really deal with, well, what's stopping you? A lot of times it's just mental stuff. People are afraid of making money. They're afraid of success. They're afraid of their own power, you know, all that stuff. So I'm at the point now where it's like, let's not, let's not just say, here's a button to push and you're going to go make money, which is what everyone wants to hear. You <laughs> I can send you to 20 million other people that are going to tell you that lie and you can go listen and, and believe it as many times as you want until you finally acknowledge the fact that it's going to take something. You know, you're going to have to really confront your stuff. Well, let's talk about this now then. What does it actually take? Because you can't just, you know, one, two, three, push a button, money falls from the sky. What you know, does it take? I guess really what, if it's about connection and it's not just about marketing, it's about building a community. What would be your advice to someone who's just starting out and they want to build that community so they can build their list and have that relationship and have that connection? Well, you said build a community. First of all, I would say be part of a community. Be part of a group of people that are running at the same pace you are because it will get you moving so much faster. Okay. You know, it doesn't matter who's in your life. If, even if you don't have support in your life, let's say your spouse doesn't necessarily believe in you yet or whatever, it's okay because you know what? Most people aren't going to believe anything till they see results, right? So you don't need to let other people around you bring you down, but be part of a community of people that believe what you believe. I believe the internet's the most powerful place to be right now. Social media and video is awesome for connecting with your audience. I want to be surrounded by people that believe the same thing and we're all running at the same pace. You don't need to be part of a community of people who are arguing with you about whether the internet's effective or not. Are you kidding? That's a waste of energy. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, so I, really, I really like your distinction there, the build a community, be part of a community. Yes. That's all right. I'm just, yeah, I'm just still stuck on that. That's really, that's Part really of profound. That are up to the same thing you are. But then you're referring to build your community. I refer to that as build your following, right? Mm. So build your following of people who are looking for the value that you have. Mm. So there are certain people that love, I don't know, tennis. There are certain people that love, um, they're looking for love in their life. You know, they want to learn all the dating secrets. There are certain people that are wanting to make money online. They want to learn all about that. There are certain people that um, are in, like, let me just use an example here. I have a client who's in the photography industry, and she's built a successful photography business. But she knows a lot about building a successful photography business. So her audience would be photographer, people that have photography businesses that want to go to another level. So that might seem like a small target market, but there's those people love content about photography. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So... Whatever it is, it's about saying, who's my target market? And I want to build a following of those kind of people that are looking for this kind of stuff. Now, your following includes anything on social media. It's your, it's your Facebook um, fans. It's your Twitter followers. It's your LinkedIn. You know, it's all of that together. And people look at all that stuff to decide whether they trust you or not, right? Uh, does this person even, is anyone listening to them? Is anyone, do they have any engagement? When they say something, do people listen, right? Mm. They want to see comments and likes and all of that's just giving social proof to what you do. That's all you're following. Now, your following is a little bit different than your list, right? So your following is your following. Let's say Facebook fell off the planet tomorrow. That's not your list. It's gone. All those followers are gone, right? But if they're on your email list, you own that list. That's yours forever, no matter what happens out there. So that's why there's an urgency in taking that following and getting them to opt in to a free offer, um, and that way you're growing your list at the same time. But again, when you say community, I just distinguish it more as your following. Mm. But it is a community of, of your followers, if you want to put it that way. Yeah, well, like what I like is when it becomes real and tangible. So someone you met on Facebook rings you up or you give them a call and then you go and you hang out at an event and you're both there at the same time and it's like, ah, oh, there you are in person. And you realize someone that you thought was this tall is actually quite short or someone that you thought was kind of not a little petite, they're actually quite tall. It's like, wow, it really brings it together. So I love it when it becomes real. That's, that's yeah. something that I get a bit of a thrill out of. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the bottom line is I, I see it as different levels. Like with with social media, with Facebook and stuff, we can read each other's comments and we see this little smiling picture next to the comment, right? It's like, oh, that's Mia Davies or, you know, whoever that is. And so we feel this like kind of certain level of connection. And then the next level is video. You watch a video of someone and you feel like you talk to them in person. You know, it's just like you have a different level of connection with them. Mm. You feel like you know them. And then the next level is meeting in person. Once you've done that, I mean, 
it's like your your friends. No, you know what I yeah, mean. You're not just friendlies. You're friends. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Wow, man, that's awesome. Like I, I also now want to talk about your podcast, which is something which is kind of where I was. Li- I was listening to it the probably about a month ago now, and when I was listening to, it, I was like that. That's it. That's awesome. I really love what you were talking about there. And it was about the difference between people that want the fast money, the online, make money online versus the people who are really plugging away week by week and, and understanding that this is going to take time to, to build. So I want, to, I want you to see if you could talk a bit about that, about the time it takes to actually build something, what it takes to remain persistent, consistent, yeah, what it, what it takes to be part of a community and build a following. Yeah, I think the bottom line is is um Sorry. It's my boyfriend. Yeah. Um so I think the bottom line is that you first have to understand what's important. And and you have to be able to see the bigger picture. A lot of people don't even understand the big picture. So how on earth can they be consistent in something? Because they don't really, they're not really clear on what they're doing, right? It's like if you go do social media every day, but you don't understand the purpose of it, you feel like you're wasting time, you get frustrated, and there's no way you'll be consistent. It's just a human being thing. So you first have to step back and say, what is my overall vision here? So if you really get that social media and video for you and your business is your connection to your audience. It's your ability to, to let your audience behind the curtain. It's your opportunity to let your audience feel like they have a voice with you. It's your opportunity to let your audience peek in on your life and see pictures of you with your kids or, or you at the office with your secretary and the staff behind you going, hey, this is what it's like here every day. This is what we're up to. You know, letting, let, giving life to what it is you say your brand is. So social media is that place where the trust factor is going to be built. Now, a lot of people say, well, there's no money made on social media, so I'm not interested. But it's like, you don't get it. You've got, yeah. you got to understand the bigger you grow this following in this you know, community in a way that you say, um, the, bigger that you, the more engagement you get, the more that people are coming back to check in on stuff. All of that is telling your customers, whoa, this is the expert in that area, right? So they're very likely to opt into your list. They're very likely to go tell their friend how awesome you are, and that person ends up buying your product and all this stuff, right? It all adds to money, but people don't see that. So as long as you understand your mind, all right, social media, I want to build the biggest following. I want to get engagement. I want to have hundreds of people commenting on my posts. I want to I want to have that kind of buzz where I make one video and I have 200 shares on my video, which means 200 people shared my video and are telling all their friends to check out my video. I want that kind of, um, I want that kind of following. And you think bigger than that, you start thinking, I want thousands of comments and all this stuff, which mm. is happening. I want, I want to create videos where there are thousands, if not millions of people tuning in to watch my video every single week. Now, if you have that kind of vision, you're going to be consistent on social media every day. You're going to post every day because you understand that the compound effect is leading to that. Um, but if you don't understand that bigger vision, then why would you take those little actions? Right. And then also, if you also understand, I need to grow my list. And my goal is to start with at least 10 leads a day. Then I want to be getting 20 leads a day, then 100 leads a day. Then if, as long as you understand that, you're going to you know, create websites that make sense. You're going to add them to your content. You're going to you know, get, people, get traffic to your, to your website consistently. But not if you don't get the big picture. So to me, the only thing that's keeping people from being consistent is understanding where the heck they're going. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like a roadmap from L.A. to New York. If you don't understand that you're trying to get to New York, you could end up in Florida or wherever or stop midway and just go, screw it. What? I don't even know where I'm going anyway, so I'm just going to stop here. Mm. So, like, it's, to me, it's really understanding the big picture of why you're even doing what you're doing. And then it's the compound effect of all of it adding up. When I look at where I am now, which I'm not even where I want to be, but I know because of where I came from nothing to the following I have and to the list I have and to the money I already make, I know what it took to do that, and it was the consistent stuff I did every day that added up. It's nothing really that glamorous, unfortunately. It's not like (laughs) I generated 30,000 leads and all this money, and I'm like, whoa, I'm an overnight success. Anyone can do it. No, it was over time. A lot of people have watched me and didn't have any trust of me for, in some cases, months, some some people probably years. And now it's three years later. they They don't even question who I am or my integrity. They've been watching me for three years. If I come out with a product that's going to help them, they're not going to wonder if I'm good at what I do. They're not going to wonder if they can trust me. 
it's uh, they're sold on me. They've been wa- they've been watching me for years. Mm. So it's that sound effect and understanding the impact on your overall business. And having that long term view, like not realizing that you're not going to be rich next week or next year or the year after or maybe even five years. Yes, it, it's possible. And bigger than that, what? Don't you want to build a brand that's going to last a lifetime? I see a lot of people like, I just want to make money online. If I could just make 10 grand, oh my God, then I can tell my husband that I've made it, whatever. Not really. It's not actually that hard to go make a chunk of money on the internet. But the question is, do you have a brand that's trusted that you can actually make money with your brand for years, for decades, and even pass it on to your kids? Mm. That's the kind of thinking you want to be having, you know? And even going back to that compound effect too, the other thing to remember is having that mindset of being the CEO of your company, you know, rather than trying to do it all yourself. If you understand the big scope, the big picture, you can start to really look at where you do need support. Maybe you want an assistant who, who you know, does certain things every single day. Maybe you want to add in somebody who will update your blog post or, or keyword target your videos or whatever it is. But none of that can even happen until you understand why you're doing all of it. You know, but you want to be thinking like the CEO, like, here's where we are, here's where we're going, and here's the best way to get there, you know? Mm, And in the beginning, it's like, right now, I have to do everything because there is no one else. Then you have to learn, this is what I kind of think too, you kind of got to learn the task, and this is what I've learned from interviewing heaps of Mm -hmm. people, you kind of got to learn the task that you have to do so that you know when you pass it on to someone that they're doing it properly. And then then you can trust them, okay, now here's the steps. You do this and, you know, I'm going to go off and do the thing that I'm good at. Exactly. In fact, that's why in my program, the final, the after, there's 12 modules, there's 12 trainings. And the 13th training is, a, <laughs> congratulations, you made it this far. You've, af- you've actually gotten yourself into profit. And now here's where you can look at where you can build your team so that all of this can run without you. But you can't even have that conversation until you've done it once, right? So mm. you've got on some level. So... That's awesome. Now, what's coming up next with you? Where where are you headed? Um, right now, let me just plug this in. Um, oh, oh, actually, no, no. Before we talk about where you're headed, can you talk about some of the some of the specific results that uh, some of your clients have gotten from following your trainings? Yeah, right now, here's what I'm seeing. I um, mention names. Give him a plug. <laughs> Uh, right now, this is what I'm seeing inside my current program. I have something called the 90 day online marketing challenge 2.0, which is really a, you go at your own pace. You can connect with my community. I have a tribe that will allow you to get social buzz on your posts. Um, and, uh, and then you can get on my weekly power calls, right? That just gets you fill up your cup for the week. Right. Um, and I'm really seeing that everything's laid out. The people who have made it all the way to, uh, challenge 12, very few of them have actually made it all the way to challenge 12, which is where I'm looking at going, all right, I'm going to require coaching inside this program because the ones who have had the coaching are um, moving that much faster through there. So the bottom line is um, the program works, but getting people to do what they need to do is where I'm really looking at, let's add in the coaching and the support. Um, but let me just give you an example right now of one of the ones that's had the coaching that really the accountability I guess is the best way to say it hmm. uh, she came into the program had no list had her name's Megan she had no list um, no knowledge of internet at all in the past two and a half months she grew a list of targeted leads running a, basically growing her following and then running a few of the techniques I teach for running Facebook ads to the right ideal people she grew her list, um, held her first webinar that she's ever had. Never has she ever done a webinar before. And she made almost five figures. It was over $9,000 on her first webinar, um, which was a really big deal. And, um, and for her, it was just, you know, it's clear. She's like, well, I just followed the steps, right? But she had the accountability factor of following those steps. Um, the other thing that I'm seeing just about 100% of my clients um, are having is the social buzz. So what I mean by that is none of them, if you look at any of their fan pages, none of them post something and then have that like dreaded thing of nobody responding and nobody hitting the like button. They all have tons of likes, tons of comments, tons of shares, because that's one of the things that they're trained on inside my program. So um, 
a lot of opportunities are opening up for people out of that, which is really interesting because there's like a basically a viral component to their sharing mm. and they're, they're getting opportunities. One of the girls was just on the call the other night and she <laughs> said she was asked to be on, is it the daily show? I don't know which one it was. She was asked to be on a TV show um, and she was just interviewed by, I can't remember who it was. It was some, someone that we would all know. Uh, but the reason is because she's posting regularly, consistently, right? She's being consistent. Um, she's growing her following because of that. But there's so many people talking about her and sharing her stuff because she's actually sharing real value that it's opening doors that she never could have even expected. So those are just some of the examples of the stuff that I'm seeing right now. Now, as far as my program reopening and this new version really being a coaching program, I... I, I mean, as far as people getting their butt from, let's say, week one to week 12, I have no doubts about the structure that is going to be put in place now because the ones who have invested in the actual accountability and the coaching get way better results, period. That's just what I'm seeing across the board. In fact, Harvard Business Review just released an article about how online universities are just not, they're not as effective. People are not finishing the programs. Hmm. And the reason I really believe is because people, as human beings, it's it's not it's like we need that accountability. We need that like almost sense of okay, I'm sh like if I don't show up this week, I'm going to someone's going to notice. If I don't show up this week, they're going to be like, "Where's Mia?" And when I do show up this week, they're going to be like, "What did you do?" Okay, last week you said you would do this. What happened? Right? That kind of accountability, do you know what it has you do? What does it have you do? It has you get stuff done. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah, now if you know someone's going to be on your case. Yeah. My, my group uh, coaching clients right now, not one of them ever misses a call every single week. And every single week, it goes like this. Here, okay, my project manager comes on the call. I say, what did they say? What did so-and-so say they get done last week? She announces it. And I say, and did they turn it in? She says, yes or no. And I say, okay, if they didn't, what got in the way for you? They have to answer. Not just to me. There's everyone on the, on the call with them, right? Okay. Well, this is what happened. I had a crazy week. Okay, great. So what are you promising for next week? But they're going to be held accountable every single week, right? And then they get to hear their own excuses every time. Now, we do it lovingly, but the bottom line is I've never seen a show rate. I have never seen um, the turnaround rate. I mean, these clients are turning stuff in. They are on fire. This group that I'm referring to right now, we're actually building their online product for them. It's an online product creation program um, every single week, every single week. This has been for the past four weeks, every single week, everything they said they would do, they've done. And they're proud of themselves because they've never been able to do this before. You know, I mean, how many of us say we're going to do something and we don't do it? So and it that's must, be, where I'm must be inspiring for them to, to be getting results, seeing each other get results and go and just like, wow, it works. Yeah, I was even thinking about when I got my master's degree, I had to show up to class. I had to turn homework in. I had to do stuff. If I didn't have to do that, I doubt I'd have my master's degree. I needed that. I needed that as a human being. You know, that's part of what it's proven to work. So I'm just looking at, okay, what works, what doesn't work, let's be honest. And now I'm just changing my programs around to really deal with that. Now, I am going to have to um, change the pricing structure because coaching is going to be included. But what I realize is if people can't come into my programs, um, let's say they're like, you know, I can't afford that or whatever it is, then that's not the that's just not the target market for this program you know there's another program that i can create that maybe will teach one technique or whatever to people and maybe a much less you know at a less lesser cost but the bottom line is my target market are going to be people who um are ready to invest in themselves because the bottom line is it's such a small investment compared to creating a lifelong income for yourself i mean it's ridiculous it's like it's like if you go get a franchise, I mean, let's say a McDonald's franchise, right? I mean, you're going to be paying millions of dollars, plus every single year you have to pay all these franchise fees. That The most successful McDonald's franchises make under six figures a year, under 100000 a year as far as profit. And they'd work their butt off to do that. What's that? They'd work their butt off to do that as well. Yeah, and then we think about college. You know, I mean, I, I had tons of of student debt and all the stuff we do to invest in ourselves. And there's no, there's no, most people are jobless right now. You know what I mean? Even mm. with a education. So it's like so crazy to me when I think about like people not being willing to invest, you know, a thousand dollars or $97 a month or whatever in 
coming online. I mean, there does come a point where it's like, okay, let's just be honest here. It's not going to happen if you're not willing to just step up and do what there is to do. You know what I mean? So that's just the point that I'm at. And actually, I just had this great conversation yesterday with, um, with a marketing genius. He owns one of the top 20 um, marketing consult, branding consulting agencies in the country that deals with like their clients are like GE and Nestle and you know people like that. We had this amazing high-level conversation about branding, about who's your target market and what, how do you want to brand yourself, which actually brings me to you. You wanted to understand where I came from and where I am now. One of my biggest things for myself and my brand, my, my brand is Mia Davies, right? I mean, that's my brand. It's my name. Is really moving away from the pack of uh, I'm clumped into make money online industry, which I don't want to be a part of. I don't like a lot of what goes on in the industry. I feel like a lot of it is inauthentic and it's like empty promises and a lot of push this button and you're going to make money and then none, no one is right. And so there's a lot of disappointment. There's a lot of like broken dreams and I'm I'm tired of the whole thing. Right. So it's like, how can I completely separate myself from this? Cause my true passion is really to wake entrepreneurs up to who they are because when they get that, they will be unstoppable. It doesn't matter what program they go into, they will get results because they get who they are until that happens. Are you kidding me? It doesn't matter what program they're in. They're not going to produce results until they stop like worshiping the, the people that they think are better than them. And they wake up to like, oh, if, if she can do it, I can do it. If he did it, I can do it. You know what I mean? Like, mm. this is who I am. It's just when they get that, people are unstoppable. Okay. And talking to that guy, what, what did you get out of that that's about branding? Yeah, I really got that it's okay to do what I'm wanting to do. You know, I've been trained and taught and mentored, right, by a lot of the, the programming in our industry is this is how it goes, right? It's um, create programs, remove yourself as much as possible, make everything scalable so you can bring masses in, right? It's all about uh, quantity rather than quality in our industry. It's all about, like, make products and people are over here and I'm over here. You don't have my cell phone number. You can't contact me. You know how the industry is, right? Yeah, yeah. It's just like, you don't get my number unless you're paying 20000 a month, whatever. All of that is, is fine. I'm not judging it. But what I'm simply saying is it's that concept of looking at, wait a minute, I want to do things differently. I've had seven-figure marketers tell me, uh-uh, remove yourself as much as possible. And I'm more saying, you know what? I know what it's going to take for people to get results. Now, you can't guarantee everyone will get results, right? You just can't, no matter what you do. People pay sometimes $10,000 and don't show up to their coaching calls. What are you going to do? That can't, It's their choice. Can't help them if they're not there. The bottom line is setting it up for people to win and saying this is the price. And this is one of the biggest things I got out of my call with him is that it's okay to say this is my target market, that my target market are the people that can invest at this level. And if you can't, there are a lot of people out there that will cater to the $97 you know, option. Mm. Do you get what I'm saying? I, can, I have to be willing to send people away when it's not your ideal target market. Now, what the temptation is in our industry is always to be like, well, I want to cater to everyone because I don't want to leave money on the table, right? But it's like, but there's a power in talking to this guy too. There's a power in knowing your target market and then sticking to it. Like, I, I, don't, work with, I, don't, I don't work with people in that area or I don't work on this, right? I don't, I don't need to be a jack of all trades. I can send people places without that fear, that scarcity mindset of I need to cater to everybody to make money. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, totally. I'll, I'll tell you <clears throat> my own little story on that is when I used to be a Xerox technician, I, I left my first business seven years ago was I left Xerox and started a business servicing machines. Now, someone would ring up and say, um, I've got this problem. It's got streaks. It needs this, or I think it's the rollers or something. I got, my first question is, what kind of machine is it? Oh, it's a Canon, blah, blah, blah. So, oh, sorry, I don't service Canon. I service Xerox. You're not my customer. Oh, do you know someone who can? Yeah. Dave, Dave down the road, he does Canon. I do Xerox. And that was it. So for me, it, it was automatic to know who my customers were or weren't because of what model machines I worked on. If I, if I didn't work on it, I did, you're not my customer. So it was easy yeah. to turn away and it was easy to say, oh, yes, I work on that. How can I help? So, I mean, exactly. it, that's a black and white concrete view of it. But when you invent what it is you do, it's kind of harder because you, look, you want the customer. You want to get your business started. Yeah, an example is I've been having uh, corporations come to me too. 
So they won't help with marketing. But co the corporate world, the corporate structure is totally different. I have friends that are experts in this. They know how to go into corporations and deal with all the upper management and lower management. I don't do that stuff, right? So me trying to do that as well is just like I end up spreading myself too thin, you know? And so um, it was it was an interesting conversation because it really just confirmed for me the things that I want to do. I am not the kind of person to follow the crowd. In fact, I, I probably am the, the exact opposite. I'm always trying to think how can I get away from all of this, you know? which I really, it was bugging me for a while because I was like, God, if I could just follow what everyone does, my life would be easier. But <laughs> for some reason, my spirit won't let me do that. It's like, I don't want to go with the flow. If something's not working, I'd rather just say, I don't like this. You know what I mean? And so it's more about, uh, you know, it's more about that. I feel like, you know, for me, everything I do, I'm always going to be adding in the personal development aspect. Because if I really look at all of it, I believe that if people really just get that core piece of who they are, then they'll run, they'll have better ideas than I do for their business, mm -hmm. you know, because their genius is inside of them. That, that's a good point. Cause I was just thinking then, um, I've noticed a lot of people have come through, not, not similar to your story, but they've come through the similar industry and then gone off and created their own thing based on kind of lessons they'd learned. Now, when you have a coach or you have people say for me in this show, people, if I speak to coaches and they want to help me build the business angle of the show, coaches teach me to be a coach. Speakers say, oh, you should start a speaking business. Internet marketers say, oh, you got to start an internet marketing thing. It's like they all t want to teach you to do their thing as opposed to going, well, what do you want to do? And what I found is what's worked best for me is trusting my instincts based on what I've learned. So I've learned mechanical lessons. Here's how to do things. But then my instincts, I think, serve me a whole lot better than just following a map. Have you found that? How, how do you find that? Yeah, absolutely. Because the bottom line is, I know the internet world, and I would recommend anybody tap into that. But at the same time, I meet people every day who are doing amazing things, and they found some other channel to do it, right? Rather than the channel that I necessarily use. So it's very true that you can't say there's one route for everybody. So it's really helping people to, to listen to themselves, too and allow their own creative energy to come out. Um, you know, this is more of a, a spiritual aspect of it, and, and I don't push my beliefs on anybody. Whatever people's view of God is or whatever is perfectly fine. But for me, what I've discovered is that it's, it's like if we truly listen to what our calling is, it's like we have a purpose. We have something we're being asked to do, right? We go through these experiences. We confront these things. We go through trainings. Half the time, we don't know why the heck we're being taught all this stuff, right? Like, why am I here? Why am I in this situation? And then later in life, it all comes together and you go, oh my gosh, now I could, I could literally create this most amazing program that would help everybody because all these experiences led me to that. So if you're willing to actually pay attention and listen to what you're being guided to do, it, you're, you're being given the answers. And I don't have all the answers for somebody else. I can show people the path if they want to come online, for example. But I'm more interested in them waking up to what their answers are. Because someone else, for example, might really have uh, being tugged to do live events, right? Like they might just be like, that is going to be their avenue is to put on these live events or to have an online show like what you're doing. You know, I don't know what that avenue is for people. But if they can listen and they can tune in, they have that answer within themselves, you know? So everything I do, I just want people to keep coming back to themselves for these answers, you know, and to, to never let anyone push them in any direction, right? So it's that ability to be able to listen to your own intuition or God or whatever it is you want to call yeah, it. Right? Now, we can talk a bit about that because I notice you do put a lot of posts on there and a lot of Bible quotes and scripture. I'm actually a Christian. I've been a Christian since oh, I don't even know how long now, 16 years or something. Bible believing, faith alone, that, that, whole, that whole deal. So it's interesting that you put that out there online where a lot of people will be will probably be scared to because it might, oh no, it's going to interrupt the business. It'll make people freak out. But in a sense... That kind of polarization can work towards it. You're not doing it for that purpose, but that kind of will polarize. Oh, I believe this. Oh, well, I want to work with someone who believes what I believe. So it can actually work, not in a marketing, build a business sense, but it can work in your favor to just be honest and say, I believe this. Yeah. Can we talk a bit about yeah. your, your beliefs if, you, if you're happy to? The bottom line for me is I'm much less interested too in like religion, right? I mean, I was raised Christian, and I would say I'm definitely Christian, but 
on the same token, I, I could care less about religion. I feel like religion actually creates separation among us, you know? It's more about your spirituality. I'm sorry, but any of us could take our last breath at any moment. So if people are offended by me talking about the concept that we all have to grapple with, that we all have to deal with. I don't care how much of an atheist, I don't care how much you're, whatever religion you are, whatever it is, the moment you're facing death, you are going to be very present. You're going to be very present to the fact that this isn't everything, right? You're going to be praying to some God. I don't know what you're going to be praying to, but you will in that moment. And ultimately, no matter what religion we are, we all have to deal with our own connection to God. And that's really what I share about and what I'm interested in. Now, the Bible, whether people believe in the Bible or not, is, is less important than, than your own connection to something bigger than you. Right? So it's like, my camera keeps flickering out. The yeah, bottom line, is you, it, it's like the difference between thinking that you are in control versus understanding there's something bigger than you really is what it all comes down to. And being able to tune into that, whatever your relationship is with God is a very personal thing. It's your own thing. But everybody's dealing with it. It's it's a human being topic. You know, and I don't I don't want to push my beliefs on anybody. Um, but inside my programs, I encourage people to to tune into to tune into God and to tune into their own to pursue their own spirituality and their own beliefs because I just I really see it as it, none of it's separate. None of it's separate. Mm, that's you know, a good point. That's a totally good point. I think because I had a bit of a downfall at the end of 2011, and I think it was from following all the trainings and the way of the world and, and going down all these paths actually led me away from my identity with who I, who I believe I am and who I believe is in charge. Right? So, and and my, my religious, not religious, but my spiritual belief yeah. It actually led me away. And it's, it's like a, I've sort of come back now and it's like, ah, okay, yes, I'm not in control. It's not about if I do this, this, and this, then I'll get that. And running around after everything, it's like I'm looked after. I don't need to worry about money. I don't need to care about anything like where I'm going to live, what's going to happen. It's like that's that's all right. That's looked after as long as I stay faithful as opposed to running around like everyone else just chasing after the wind, you know. And inside of the entrepreneurial realm, I think it's so critical because I saw it for myself where I said that I wasn't chasing money, but I was. And and everyone faces that feeling of like, okay, there's a fine balance of greed versus like humbling yourself and like serving people and all of that. So I feel like having, for me, the Bible brings me back to that. I don't know of another book that centers me that way. There's a lot of conversations about like calling it like universe and... Uh, <laughs> I don't know, source or mother. I don't know what people call it all. But for me, when I, when I follow the teachings of the Bible, and again, this isn't attached to any particular religion. I mean, if people could look at the Bible as all the lessons are in there. No matter what religion you are, you could read that. Every book is based on the principles in that book. You know, I mean, they just are. But a lot of people don't understand the Bible. And unfortunately, a lot of people have been hurt by religion. They've been judged by people inside the church. And I totally get it. I mean, Church is not always the most safe place to be. I find my spirituality with God when I'm doing my own reading of the Bible, you know, or I'm dancing in my garage or I'm praying or whatever it is. But what I have found is that the principles in the Bible keep me humbled and keep me centered. And anything else, like a lot, there's a lot of people into like, um, I don't know, the, I don't know what you would call it, like other realms or like crystals and, you know, what would you call that? Like New Age sort of stuff maybe. And I've gone down that route. In fact, I moved away from the Bible for about 10 years because I have the foundation in that. I moved away from that for about 10 years and I didn't really talk much about God and it was pretty much like I'm in charge of my own destiny and I got this covered and I don't need God and you know, it's kind of like getting into the new agey stuff and all I know is I felt lost. Like my spirit just did not feel filled. I didn't feel at peace. I didn't feel... I didn't feel I was on the right track. The only thing that always brings me back to centered and humble, because my all of us have our egos that can go crazy, right? The only thing that keeps me grounded is the word and just my time with God. And if I even go a week sometimes, like I can forget, right? We get busy and caught up in life. And when I do that, I notice this energy about me that I don't like. You know, it's just like go, 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 you know, and it's like, okay, let's reel ourselves back in, get refocused. 
I mean, we're going to die at any day. We don't even know. So why do we live that way? It's, it's really crazy, actually, you know? So to me, it's not separate. And I don't, I've had, I've never had backlash about me sharing about God the way that I do. Now, if you notice, I don't like write, you know, praise Jesus and Jesus Christ all over the place. Jesus is like amazing. I, I'm in love with Jesus. I mean, when I, every time I read about him, I'm like, he teaches us everything about how to live. He's amazing. But I don't push it. Do you know what I mean? Like, I don't know what it is. The way I share, I have never had someone backlash with me. Um, maybe one, like maybe one time someone said, a guy actually did say this. He said, he, he said, I prefer, and this is on my personal fan page, mind you. And he subscribed to my personal page, not my fan page, my personal page. And he said, I would prefer that you keep your, um, you know, your, your uh, religious comments or something um, to yourself and just please keep posting about marketing. Now, this is my personal page. So I said, listen, here on my page, I'm going to share everything that is in my heart. And if you don't like it, you can unsubscribe. In fact, I would prefer that you do. I don't need someone reading my post that doesn't like what I'm saying. He wasn't even my friend. He was subscribed. Now, on my fan page, I don't put as much about this, right? But my personal page, I share, like, everything, you know? And my fan page, I try to keep it as much to marketing as possible because that's why people are subscribed to that page. But either way, I don't have any shame in that. My calls, I share about it. And if people don't like it, um, you know, it's, it's something they need to deal with. They need to deal with their own confront. They need to confront that piece for themselves. It's not my problem. But I never push my beliefs on anybody. I just simply bring up the point that it's a, a central piece. Yeah, and and I, I want to commend you for for taking that stand and and just putting it out there because a lot of people will be scared to you know oh it'll hurt the business or or whatever you know or people yeah you will get backlash or not but it doesn't really matter. What you what, one thing you are promised in the Bible is if you preach or you know, if you talk about it you will be persecuted. So if, even if it does get backlash, good. Well, I actually had an interesting um, comment from someone recently who said sometimes I feel like people talk about God um, to look good. Mm. You know, that's very possible that some people do. I was like, but trust me, um, first of all, we can't judge each other on that because if someone's talking about that, you don't really know what their heart is. So who are we to judge each other that way? Like, oh, I think you're writing about that to look good. But, um, but the second piece of it is that um, the second piece of that is that Anytime you are going to talk about God, it's more likely going to hurt your business than have you look good is, is the general consensus. But let's just say it became trendy and cool and now everyone starts talking about God and the Bible or whatever. And if someone got annoyed about that, I'd be like, so what? At least the word's getting out there. You know what I mean? Mostly overall, everything I've ever posted, whether it be scripture, whether it be just my talking about God, um, I am amazed at at the engagement rate with that stuff like people most people love it they're just like thank you and you should see all the emails I get where people are like thank you for just being honest and saying it because I feel like it's one of the biggest things missing in our industry it's really sad it's like let's all talk about money let's all go make a bunch of money and become millionaires but let's not talk about the most critical concept which is God and personally I'm kind of sick of it so I just talk about it and people could have their opinion yeah. And, and you know, it's, it's that thing. It's one of those things is kind of what attracted me to going, I've got to get Mia on. <laughs> awesome. Because I knew about the marketing stuff, but it was like, I want to get you on and you know, we'll, we'll get to that. <laughs> we'll have yeah. a chat about that. So that's awesome. All right. So here you go. It, it used to be in our schools. It, it used to be, you know what I mean? Like God and even what was in the Bible has always been part of our country. I mean, I know you're in Australia, but it's always been part of our country. And slowly everything's been taken out because people are so afraid to offend anybody. But it's like, there's no offense. You don't even need to take offense in my beliefs anyways. You know what I mean? So it's so bizarre. Like, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I, I noticed that it's different. Yeah, we, we'd say we're a Christian country, but culturally you guys are brought up with it, you know, um, in a different way. Like it's much more a part of everyday life. Like I think, yeah, it's just something I've noticed about. I've, I've, it's funny too, being in the industry and the way that the, the online thing has gone, I've had a lot more dealings with people in America. And as I, I have much more of an understanding than I used to have, you know, mm. and it's, which is, it's a good thing. You know, it's, um, we have this thing in Australia where they call it the tall poppy syndrome. So we kind of cut down people who have risen up and it's like, ah, oh, now they're too big for their boots and it's, you know, they're big headed or whatever. In America, it's like, you see, you guys seem to more celebrate people that have gone, you've done something, you put the effort in and you achieved it. Well done. Seems, yeah. So, so it's, 
so from our perspective, it could seem that Americans are just just boastful and and whatever. But I kind of see after learning more about you guys, it's more a cultural thing where you're celebrating victory. I guess in a way, I don't know. It's just something I've yeah. noticed. I think I think the Aussies would probably te- who are in the internet marketing space. I've spoken to a few about it too. They've they've noticed that phenomenon as well. Yeah, I think it's amazing. But at the same time, that's where God comes in too, where it's like, I don't feel like I, like anytime I think I did all this or I made it, that's when my ego does get big. And that's a lot of where I'm like, that's the most critical time to bring God in and be like, thank you, God, for giving me the brain and the ideas, the opportunity for leading all these people to me. And most people just don't have that. They're kind of like, woohoo, I made it. And now that's where you can crash and burn too, because you think it's all in your control, you know? Mm-hmm. When you can humble yourself in times of success and say, thank you, it's amazing. That's excellent. Okay. Uh, what we'll do, we'll finish on that note because that's just, this is just such an awesome topic and I, I think you've covered it well. Where do people find out more about you? Where do we send them? What's, say, maybe your website, your Facebook page? Yeah, just uh, I mean, me, MiaDavies.com, my website. Um, is a great place because from there you can go to my Facebook fan page. You can go to my YouTube channel, wherever it is, right? So that's a good place to start. Okay, so meadavies.com. I'll, I'll link that up in the show notes, guys. So, yeah, if you're, if you're listening to this via audio somewhere, uh, come to the site, click on the link, and, and go visit. Um, and, yeah, Mia, so it's been great. I've been looking forward to this for a long time. And, uh, yeah, you've been an awesome guest and delivered tons of value, even more than I thought, which is awesome. Well, I can talk, right? So... <laughs> We just went on and on, but thanks for having me on. It was really fun, and um, it's awesome we can be connected across the globe. Yeah, it is. All right, you make it a great day, and I'll talk to you soon. Too. Bye.